President Sisi just finished his four, first four-year term and was recently re-elected. Uh, his calls for, re, for uh, reforming religious discourse went unheard by the uh, Azhar. Uh, nothing materialized from reforming educational curricula. Salafis left to spread their extremist teachings in every corner of the society. Attacks on the cops continued with ferocity that even exceeded those observed during Mubarak and even the Muslim Brothers' time. Uh, when examining the Egyptian government aspects of uh, denial and deception, we find uh, that the Constitution's second article, which states that Sharia is the primary source of legislation, remain problematic as it justifies uh, Muslim superiority over Copts. He frequently says, however, that all Egyptians are equal. So why is it that there are no cops in senior positions in the Defense Department, in the Foreign Ministry, in the Intelligence Department, in the military? There are no Coptic gov governors, and most significantly, there are no cops on the national soccer team. It's not enough for the Constitution to guarantee freedom of belief if the law institutionalizes discrimination. Prevention means putting an end to legally sanctioned discrimination. What President Sisi says is important. What he does and what he urges the parliament to do is more so. I, for one, will be focused on his actions, on whether or not he takes concrete steps to change laws and practices in ways that reflect respect and tolerance for, for a difference and to promote and protect human rights and dignity of all Egyptians. Freedom of religion is not merely the freedom to worship as you wish. It's much more than simply the freedom to worship. It is the freedom to, to live out fully uh, your religious convictions. It is not merely the freedom of existing communities to preserve themselves. It is not merely a call to peaceful coexistence. Yet for Egypt to truly succeed, it needs to harness the talent and creative energies of all its citizens regardless of faith. It needs to ensure Egyptians of minority religious groups do not suffer discrimination in their daily lives. Calls for tolerance and equal treatment for all need to be fully implemented by Egypt's security forces, police, and judiciary. Peaceful coexistence is necessary but not sufficient. It is not the fullness of religious liberty. It, it, religious freedom is not merely freedom from state-sanctioned persecution, and it is not merely the ability to live out religion as a private matter. Religious liberty is about the ability to live out the fullness of your convictions and your conscience in every aspect of your life and to speak to others authentically about those convictions. I have been given much. Therefore, I'm expected as a biblical principle to give much. And that's why we should be involved in our Coptic causes and we should support each other. Even sometimes if we don't agree that the, like the, the message is being delivered the same way that I wanted to deliver it, that someone is making an effort and someone is going beyond their normal day-to-day -day comforts to advocate for us, this is something that should be supported by all of us. And that's why I'm doing, this is why I'm being involved and this is why I would encourage you to get involved as well. We need your support to continue to build support across the Congress and in the administration and in the United States Senate for uh, our resolution. I'll continue to gauge, engage with the U.S. government, our partners and other governments, and those groups like Coptic Solidarity that continue to speak out against the plight of intolerance and fear that many Christians around the world face on a daily basis. We have an immense talent pool, and if we don't tell that story, who's going to tell it for us? It'll be the wrong story that will be told. The same resiliency and hard work that allowed us to survive as a people in Egypt is also the reason why we flourish in the world when we don't have opportunities denied to us. Through advocacy, we can make real difference in the world. In this country, we have the most powerful legislature in the history of the world. And many of you are American citizens and you vote. It only takes 15 people contacting their congressperson to get them to pay attention to an issue they have not paid attention to before. We have an easier time understanding and digesting um, institutions that aren't necessarily backed by the church but could have the same interests as the church, namely the protection and prosperity of the Coptic people throughout the world. Some of you sitting in this room tonight 
may have personally experienced persecution. You or even your loved ones in Egypt may have been exposed to threatening situations, cruel acts of aggression and discrimination. And many of you have decided to come here to the United States in pursuit of peace, freedom and equality. And then for that, nobody should judge you, rather respect you. And I respect that very much in the people of Coptic Solidarity that even though you have found your desired peace you sought in your new home, you still reach out with solidarity and compassionate hearts to your people in Egypt. And I challenge you and encourage you that you have immense amounts of power here. It's not that hard to wield. And if you do it with integrity and you do it with honesty and you do it in coalition, you can make dramatic change in the world. Egypt does not want foreign countries to learn about the true condition of cops in Egypt, particularly as it relates to the pervasive repression and discrimination against them. There is a belief that by uh, presenting a certain narrative about what President Sisi and his regime are doing vis-a-vis -vis the cops, that they could win international support. In this case, deception, um, deception takes the form of misleading, in many cases, uh, a false narrative that Sisi is the savior of the Coptic community. The reason that Sisi has been able to treat the Coptic issue as an international phenomenon is that he feels that he can get away with it. He feels that the uh, he feels that he can take Coptic support for granted, and all he has to do is enough to win over the international community. But he doesn't actually have to address the legitimate needs of the Coptic community as they live them on a daily basis. It is imperative that the international community also remain engaged with Egypt, and urge President El Sisi to take real action towards protecting minority groups in Egypt. Religious freedom is a core tenet of democracy and should therefore be a central, should be therefore central to U.S. foreign policy. I also joined with uh, representatives Hill, Cicilline, Trott, Maloney, and others in introducing H.R. 673. Um, uh, that bill would, among other things, uh, uh, push our State Department to urge Egypt to end the culture of impunity for attacks on Christians and their churches and to arrest those who are responsible. Last year, I met with President Sisi uh, and urged a protection of Coptic Christians and churches. I've also met with the Egyptian foreign minister, the ambassador, many times. I had uh, served as a Sunday school teacher since I was 16 in Egypt. Then when I went to the US, I served as a Sunday school teacher. And when I went to Canada, I served as a Sunday school teacher. But at that point in my life, I decided that we have a lot of Sunday school teachers, but we don't have anybody who has a voice. We don't have enough communicating voices that speak a language that the rest of the world understands and relates to. And that was the moment when I decided to get involved in uh, Coptic activism. We have an overrepresentation of, of certain fields in, in our community. This really important mission cannot be tactically employed by an army of Coptic doctors, Coptic pharmacists, you know, Coptic engineers who are working on this issue part time. It needs to be supported by you know these people, and it needs to be grown by these people. But it needs to expand, and um, to the next generation of lawyers, academics, policymakers from our community that are specializing in Egypt and in Coptic issues. So do not be afraid. Be courageous to speak up for your communities. Do not let yourself be intimidated by the so-called political correctness and this false sense of compassion. And summon all your courage. Call out the injustice and let your decision and policy makers see the reality and the gravity of these atrocities. Uh, we are with you. So I want to just finish by saying how grateful I am to you. You helped mobilize us. You know, this is a place where the squeaky wheel does get the wheel. Uh, part of it is that there's so many issues that are on under consideration at all times, so it's hard to stay focused for, you know, a, a House or a Senate. Uh, but when you come up here and you, you just provide us with insight and the passion you bring to it, it does inspire and it does mobilize us to fight and to pray, so thank you.